guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jessica and I created Dolled Up by Jay. So in today's video, I wanted to discuss hot trending shoes and you know, should you buy them? Are they gonna be timeless? What do we think? Let's have a little discussion. So I have eight pairs of trending shoes and I'm gonna discuss them all with you and I would love to hear your thoughts and your input as well because some of these, I don't even know if they're gonna be around but I'm just giving my unfiltered opinions. So if you're here for it, definitely give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing as I post new fashion content every single week. All right, let's get to the video. First on the agenda, I have to discuss the Versace Medusa Evitas pumps. Honestly, like if you have been on Instagram anytime in the last month or so, you would have seen so many girls posting these crazy sky high platform pumps. They are super sold out everywhere. If you can get your hands on them still, great. I think that they're kind of like a cool moment they are not my personal vibe, but I can see like that this trend is really like, it might just keep kicking off. We might see more designers coming out with styles like this, as you will see in one of the next shoes I'm gonna discuss. These are a satin pump. The platform kind of like juts out a bit and then they do have a dangling Medusa head just on one of the shoes and then also crystal embellishments on the top strap. Now the top strap is like, looks a bit dangerously dainty considering how bold these shoes are. They designed that for a purpose and I'm sure that it works just fine. Now, the one thing I will say is that satin shoes, especially in some of the colors, like the lighter colors they offer in the pink, I think the pink is super fabulous, like Barbie moment. However, I've owned a pair of satin shoes. Thank God they were not expensive, but they're a nightmare. If you get those shoes dirty, if you're at a bar, if someone spills a drink on those, good luck getting them cleaned. I don't even know if you can properly clean satin shoes like without them falling apart. Um, I wore satin platform heels to a wedding once. They were actually super cute in a moment. I had to literally throw them out. Like they were trashed after so many like drinks spilled on them. Like it was like an outdoor wedding. So like dirt from like the grass. It just was not a moment. So I can just imagine spending so much money on these shoes you're gonna have to be really careful with them if you don't get the black ones and like really baby them to make sure that they stay in good condition also one thing about satin it is really rigid and it's not gonna stretch and move like leather and i can just see that kind of like almost square looking um base of the foot like cutting across and not being very comfortable just from looking at them so i think that they look really cool and i've seen bloggers wearing them and like really rocking them and they're definitely a moment because it's kind of like a retro -y but also like new trend i don't know if it's very timeless i think if you have the cash and you're a versace fan and you love this style then yeah i definitely try and find them i think they are cool but I don't think that they're super timeless. I don't think they're gonna be super practical. I think they might be a bit of a headache, but I think that they're also cool. Okay, next is the Valentino Tango Pumps or Tango Pumps. These are kind of like an adaptation. I actually like these a lot better than the Versace. I just think they're cool. I think this Mary Jane style, we're probably gonna end up seeing like a lot more of coming into spring, summer. But these Valentino pumps are also super selling out as well. I saw them the other day and I was like, oh wow, they have like a size seven and a size 11 online in the UAE. Like, wow, okay. I think they look really nice on. I think they look like kind of like sexy, like gossip girl vibes. I think they're awesome. Uh, I do like the little subtle Valentino V on the side of them as well. And I do like how they have a glossy leather finish so they won't be as hard to keep, you know, clean as the Versace. So, I mean, in my opinion, if you really like the style, I would definitely go for the Valentino. I really love the quality of all of my Valentino heels. So for that reason, I would feel confident purchasing these and knowing that they would be good. I also really like the back of them, how it has this cute little, like, almost like bunny ear on the back. I think that's really like feminine. So yeah, I think these shoes, they might be a trend for now, but I think they're definitely gonna, they can transition into future seasons a lot easier than the Versace, which are like quite out there. You know what I mean? Next is the Devon Mules by the Attico. These are also super influencer heavy shoes. Ah, I'm sorry, I don't love them. They're a little bit too out there for me. Just the geometric heel, like it's a bit odd. 
and also they offer them in like really strange colors like there's like bright orange there's neon green they have like a bright pink satin though which is really cute bright pink satin is also like very trendy i noticed for the season like tom ford has even a gorgeous pair you saw the Versace ones and now these, I think Amina Mwadi, um, the mock and mock, mock, mock and mock shoes, bright satin pink is like hot. Honestly, I just don't love them. I don't necessarily think that these really geometric shoes are particularly timeless. I think if you have the cash and you like them, go for it. But I don't really see them lasting like, you know, in five years if they might be cool for the next two. But yeah, those are just my thoughts. Next, Paris, Texas boots, particularly the stiletto boots in like the crocodile finishes and like their classic leather. I've seen more and more celebrities and stuff wearing these on Instagram lately, even like since I posted about them and I unboxed them. I've got that video, I'll link it for you below. I was trying to find these boots as well while I was shopping in the UK and it was like a needle in a haystack, but there are lots of them online. And yeah, honestly, from my experience with these boots, I haven't done an update yet on this channel. So I just thought I would tell you now. They're super sexy. You get so many compliments. The sole is leather, but they're not slippery, which is amazing. I have the patent leather 105 millimeter stiletto ones. Chef's kiss, sex appeal, sex appeal, sex appeal. I love these boots. I think it's my favorite pair of boots I've owned in like years. I love them so much. I also think for a luxury brand, the price point isn't so offensive that it's unattainable. They were under a thousand dollars Canadian, so I'm happy with that for a nice luxury Italian leather boot that's leather all throughout, inside, lining, sole, everything. I've also worn them numerous times now, and let me tell you the comfort level, okay? It's literally like wearing a pair of Louboutins, but with sheets on your legs. Like they're not a walking shoe, okay? They are a dinner shoe, they are a going to the bar shoe and sitting down. They are getting in and out of a taxi shoe. These are not for walking for long periods. Your feet will literally go numb if you are out all night in them. However, I do not care because they look so fabulous that I just am obsessed and I love them so much and I hope to own more pairs because they are stunning, 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 stunning. And I have been a little bit rough with them um, one particular night when I may have had too many champagnes. And I was really scared to look at them in the morning and see if I've scuffed them up because I remember there are a couple occasions when I like kind of bummed in things, they were fine. So overall, very happy with the Paris, Texas boots. I see them still taking off on social media and I love them. I love them so much and I highly recommend them. Okay, next, speaking of mock and mock, however you say it, is the double bow heels. If you have been in any luxury department store in the last year, you will have seen these shoes becoming super iconic. At first, they were a little bit polarizing, a little bit weird. They were a little bit like, are they too much? Are they too Barbie-ish? Like, are they tacky? I always loved them since I saw them. Uh, the only thing that actually recently changed my opinion was I love to watch Cassie Thorpe's channel. I think that she's like super hilarious. I like her style. And she was saying that was one of her worst luxury purchases of 2021. And she showed a close up of the shoes and where they wrap around the ankle, the crystal, some of them had like kind of come off. And she explained that it's basically like a rope of glue and the crystals are like kind of shoved in it. And some of the crystals had started to come off. So there was little like indents and for the price of these shoes, like I wanted to buy them so many times, but Canadian, they're almost like $1,800 to $2,000, which is a lot of money for a pair of shoes that are a clearly a special occasion shoe. They're not an everyday shoe. And again, a lot of them are satin. So you're gonna have to be really careful with them if you buy them in a color, not to get them dirty, especially for the high price point, right? So I never ended up buying those shoes and Seeing her talk about now how they were the one of the worst purchases uh, kind of makes me feel good about that because I think for the price point, you should not have crystals coming off the shoes whatsoever. I'm sorry, that's not acceptable to me. I have a beautiful pair of Gian Vito Rossi shoes back here and I've had these for a year and a half now. I've worn them several times. Excuse them, they are a little bit dirty, but these are handmade with Swarovski crystals. They are absolutely stunning. There is not a single crystal that has come off of these shoes since I've owned them. Yes, they were about the same price as the Mock and Mock, but the quality of these is amazing. The heel stoppers have not worn. The back of the heels still look impeccable. 
and I'm honestly very happy with these shoes. That's why I always vlog Gian Vito Rossi because I own a pair like this and I think they are exquisite quality and I'm always interested to see what they put out. Some of their styles are a little bit boring lately, but honestly, if you like a nice Rofsky moment, maybe check those out. I think these are called the Metropolis shoe because I can attest that the quality is amazing and you're not gonna have crystals falling off like with those shoes. Okay, next is a shoe that is super, super trendy and I really wanted to possibly buy it for New Year's and then I was just like too jet lagged and they closed all of the roads around the Dubai mall at 4 p.m. And I had my hair done that day. There was no way I could make it in time. So on the next occasion, these are the Rene Calvilla, I think that's how you say it, the Cleo sandals. I've seen so many posts on celebrities the last probably six months, especially during the holiday season, wearing these shoes. Now, I know that the beaded ones are very popular as well, but specifically these Clio sandals are seem to be a classic for the brand. And I've always thought that their just flat sandals were super beautiful with the, like the crystal embellished bows and so many fun designs. But the Clio sandals have really gone crazy in popularity, especially during the holiday season. And you know what, for a crystal adorned sandal, I think these are about like a thousand or so dollars plus, but Louboutin charges three times that for some of their crystal embellished sandals, given they are all over the shoe, but some of them are actually 2000. So the price of these aren't horrible in the world of luxury. Like I hate to say that like, oh my God, a thousand dollars isn't that bad for shoes, but they're cause they have the crystals on them. That's just what I'm trying to say. I have not tried these on yet, so I cannot attest to the quality, but they have the wrap around on the leg, which is super sexy. I'm always into that type of style. I think these are a really classic piece and whether or not they burn out in popularity, they're super almost neutral because you can buy so many colors. You can buy the soft gold, bright gold. You can buy a silver, you can buy satin ones. I think they have leather ones. There are so many options and these are just a really classic shoe to me. I don't really see them going anywhere soon. I might be wrong, but I think they are a good purchase for your wardrobe and for special occasions. I think that they are so easy to match with so many different items. Okay, yeah, and next, Amina Mawadi, strappy heels. I don't know the name, I'll put it on the screen. Don't love them, not for me. And then the flounced heel, how I feel about that heel if you haven't subscribed to this channel. It's just personally not for me. I love the, a lot of her shoes until I see the heel. That's just, a, it's just for me. I just don't necessarily know how timeless they're gonna be. It's still a relatively new brand. I think it's amazing that the designer is so young. I think she's in her early thirties and she's like, taken over like every Instagram model's closet and every celebrity. I think that's awesome and so commendable. Personally, I just am not in love with the type of heel. She does have regular stilettos, but it seems to be the ones everyone are always crazy about are like the flounced heel. However you, I don't even know, I just call it a flounced heel. And then these next ones as well are the um, the Begum crystal heels. To note quickly, these are kind of like the princess shoes she has. Those were super popular last year. Um, I think they're gorgeous. I just, again, I don't like the look of the the heel and especially the plastic ones. How that heel is like really like kind of thick looking on the back looks a little cheap to me, but I love the front of the shoes. I wish she offered like a different heel style, but with the crystal on the front, the same would have been gorgeous. I don't see these going anywhere. They have tons of stock on like Farfetch, Matches Fashion, Saks, um, all of the luxury retail websites have tons of Amita Mawadi. It's not going anywhere, these shoes, and she's just creating more and more versions of them. So, I mean, my personal feelings aside, I think that if you are looking to invest in a pair of these, know that they are known to be hard to find, they sell out fast, they're unavailable in some stores, or the sizing is limited. So yeah, if you're into them, I would definitely try and go for it because I don't see them going away anytime soon. I just don't know how timeless that geometric kind of heel is gonna be, but I think that they will become kind of like a cult favorite, even if they do fade out in popularity. Next is another item that I am going to put my personal feelings aside for. It is the Bottega Lug Chunky Sole Boot. Um, personally, I'm not a chunky sole boot lover. It's a little too rock and roll for me, a little too grunge. Like this is about as grunge as I get. It's like wearing a hoodie on this channel. That's like literally in my day-to-day -day life as well, like about as grunge as I get. But I think that these boots on the right people look really cool. Like especially like chic looking girls wearing them with like, you know, 
a skirt and then a cute like blazer or something or like a puffer coat with skirt or even like you know a nice tight legging and like a cute just like winter sweater I do like how this sole is chunky because obviously if you're walking around a city and it's snowing, it's raining, you don't want to be wearing a flat, slick leather boot where you could slip and hurt yourself. I've done that so many times in Vancouver. It's not fun. So I can see the merit of why these boots are so popular and also just the chunky soles in general are like very trendy at the moment and they're not going anywhere fast. And so these boots are available in an array of neutral colors. There's obviously the black, there's like a white. I think there's a couple of different um, like creams and beiges of brown. And yeah, I think that these are a sensible purchase if you are into this style. I know they're super trendy and I see so many other brands doing the chunky sole as well. Dior has a chunky sole over the knee boot now. So does Prada, obviously. They've got like a whole bunch of renditions of this and uh, a lot of fast fashion now is offering things like this as well. And it's like, you know, it's trending when you see it in fast fashion because fast fashion doesn't ever sleep, right? It doesn't mean it's going to be timeless, but you know, I think these are a good investment again, if the style is for you. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on these shoes. Let me know. I would love to know even if you agree with me, disagree with me. I'd love to have a conversation. And if you are new here, definitely consider subscribing. If you are a returning subscriber, Thank you for watching. I love you lots and I hope that everyone is doing very well today. All right, take care. Bye guys.